This is a Super Formula race car. However, there is one major difference. There is no driver. Guys, welcome back to Racing Direct. I know we usually cover Formula One on this channel. However, this is a little bit different. What you are looking at here is the world's first fully autonomous racing series, the Abu Dhabi Autonomous Racing League. They had their first full self-driving race this past week on April 27. It took place at the Yas Marina Circuit on Yas Island in Abu Dhabi. Of course, we all know it as the grand finale of the Formula One season, but now it is the home of a groundbreaking AI-generated race. Now, obviously, that idea sounds pretty intriguing. However, it was a bit of a mixed bag of results. There were a lot of strange, interesting things happening during the weekend. However, there are a lot of cool things as well that really should be looked at. Now, the cars in question that were being used, of course, were Super Formula cars from Japan. If you are unaware of these cars, they are blisteringly quick. They are actually the second fastest open wheel cars in the world, of course, behind Formula One. That's why we're currently seeing a lot of drivers come up through the ranks through Super Formula instead of just the usual Formula Two and Formula Three. These cars are blisteringly quick when they have actual drivers behind the wheel. But how on earth were they going to fare with AI drivers? So there were multiple teams from around the world, actually from the likes of China, Europe, the Middle East, the United States, pretty much everywhere, who were all designing these programs to race the cars by themselves. The usual cockpit of the car was completely covered, obviously there is no human inside of the cockpit. It has been completely replaced by sensors and a massive camera that apparently could make split second decisions, well not even split second, it could basically make a decision every 5 milliseconds. Now obviously the main purpose of this is a testing bed to develop technology for road cars in the future. Of course that's a big part of Formula 1 if you didn't know. A lot of innovation comes from Formula 1 is implemented in road cars. Just look at the use of DRS in modern supercars like the GTPRS and the McLaren Senna. So that was clearly the main goal of the Abu Dhabi Thomas Racing League but they still wanted to put on a very cool and exciting show and well it was definitely exciting but maybe not for the reasons they were hoping for. Now we should note that there was actually quite a few spectators at the race, it looked like the grandstands actually had a decent showing. It also sounds like there was hundreds of thousands of people tuning into the live stream on YouTube and if that wasn't good enough for anybody you could also watch the race through a VR headset which gave you special graphics and special displays and you could jump into the seat technically of any one of these autonomous super formula cars. Now if something like that can be implemented in the future for watching Formula 1 races or even WEC or IndyCar, that would be super super cool. But as for the race itself, it was basically an online Gran Turismo of Forza lobby. Uh, there was a bit of weirdness going on, yes there was a, a bit of clean racing going at the start, the cars seemed to be faring pretty decently, but of course this is the first time they've done this so there were some strange oddities as well. For starters, just like you have sometimes in when you're racing in Gran Turismo or Forza or Assetto Corsa, whatever your game might be, the worst fear imaginable is having your controller disconnect in the middle of the race, and yes, that was happening from time to time during the autonomous race at Yas Marina Circuit. There was also a strange crash that happened where one car just seemingly made the complete wrong decision and decided to dive back in behind a car into a braking zone, completely rear-ended, destroyed it. It's kind of reminiscent of that Ricardo and Verstappen crash from Baku years ago. It was very, very strange, but the weirdest moment of all was definitely when one particular car locked its brakes, spun around, and that caused the cars to just completely malfunction, essentially. Some of them did drive around the car, which was actually very, very impressive. And again, kudos to the people who designed these AI programs. It's completely amazing that they were able to accomplish something like this in the first place. But then after there was a strange incident, it's obvious the AI knew that they weren't allowed to overtake under yellow flags. So once they sort of cleared the incident, they all just stopped and they didn't know what to do. It was a very strange ending to the race. Now, I can't honestly see this becoming an actual real thing in the future. I mean, an autonomous racing series with no drivers doesn't really sound too appealing to grow a massive fan base again. I'm pretty certain this is mainly just being used as a test bed for new technology and showing off what these guys can do. But despite all of the weird flaws and incidents and just the kind of crazy lulls that happened during the race, everyone involved should be very proud of what they created. This was a really, really cool thing to see. 
Just the fact these cars were able to navigate around the circuit at race pace by themselves with absolutely no driver, it was quite the spectacle to behold. I think we can all pretty much agree on that. It was a very cool glimpse into the future of autonomous driving. I'm sure a lot of big car manufacturers were probably keeping a very close eye on this race to see how it goes and I don't know, maybe some people got jobs out of this and got hired to work on autonomous cars for the future. If so, that is great for them. Um, also, just shout out the number on the race winning car happened to be 33, which is a little bit unsettling. We all know a certain driver who used to wear number 33, who is basically wiping the field in Formula One. And now it looks like there's another 33 is wiping the field in the Abu Dhabi Autonomous Racing League, the car that managed to overcome all of the bizarre AI flaws and take the checkered flag for the victory. There was also a ton of money up for grabs too, I believe it's in the neighborhood of a couple million pounds, so shout out to the winning team for building the best autonomous super formula car. But guys, let me know down in the comments what you thought of this very, very interesting display of motorsport. Is an AI or autonomous racing league something you would actually consider watching if there's absolutely no drivers to cheer for and you're basically just cheering for your favorite computer? Give me those thoughts down below. Let me know what you thought of Abu Dhabi Racing League's first autonomous race. Make sure you hit subscribe, of course, like and share the videos. We'll be back to the F1 content in the Miami Grand Prix very, very soon. See you next time on Racing Direct.